Well, we're in very good time, I think. Oh, but so what? You always are. <laughs> I hope so, I hope so. How do you do, Captain Wentworth? Why, Miss Elliot. Good evening. The weather has been very sad since you arrived. Oh, I never let the weather bother me. Unless I'm at sea. How do you like Bath so far? Oh, it seems perfectly delightful. I'm told the singer tonight is very good. Is he? I'm afraid I've never heard of him before. Well, nor had I until yesterday. <laughs> I've hardly seen you since our day at Lyme. I'm afraid you must have suffered very much from the shock of the accident. No. No, I was upset, of course, as everyone was, but nothing more. It was a frightful moment. Frightful day. However, the day did have some effects, some consequences which are not frightful at all. Yes, I know. When you had the presence of mind to send Benick for the surgeon, you would hardly have guessed the important part he would play in Louise's recovery. Indeed, I did not. But it seems... I think it will be a happy match, don't you? Yes. Yes, they're very fortunate. They have no difficulties to cope with at home, no opposition from parents, no caprice or delays. No, so I understand. All this is very much in favour of their happiness. More than... But I must confess, I do think there's a great disparity there. Between their minds, I mean. Well... Louise is a very amiable, sweet-tempered girl and not stupid. And Benick's something more. He's a clever man. A man of real feeling. Yes, I know. A man like that in his situation with a heart almost broken. Fanny Harville was a very superior woman, you know. And his attachment to her was an attachment indeed. So I have heard people say. A man does not recover from such a devotion to such a woman. He ought not to. He does not. Good evening, good evening, Lady Davenport. Oh, very good to see you again. You must Lady excuse Rumpel. me, sir. This is my party. Of course. Perhaps I'll see you in the concert room. Oh, I hope so. Is Elliot left alone? Return of your burn in Bracho Kitana. song? Oh, yes, I thought it was very pretty. Oh, it was. But I couldn't admire it as much as I should. You see, I didn't understand a word of it. Oh, well, this is what he was saying. My heart finds no peace away from my dear beloved. There remains only pain to lacerate my breast. Return my beloved to the arms which love you, and peace will delight my soul forever. Is that all? 
doesn't seem very much for such a long song. <laughs> well, he says it all several times. But that's more or less the sense of it, or rather the meaning of the words. One mustn't talk of sense in an Italian love song. Oh, indeed not. <laughs> but that's as near to the meaning as I can give you. I don't pretend to understand the language. I'm a very poor Italian scholar. Oh, yes, yes, I see you are. I see you know nothing of the matter at all. You only understand it well enough to translate at sight these inverted, transposed, curtailed Italian lines into clear, comprehensible, elegant English. Oh. You need say nothing more of your ignorance. That was complete proof. Well, I never refuse such polite kindness, sir, but I would be sorry to be examined by an expert. Oh, my dear cousin. I've not had the pleasure of visiting in Camden Place so often without finding out something about Miss Anne Elliot. And I must tell you, I think she is far too modest for the world in general and too highly accomplished for modesty to be natural in any other woman. For shame. This is too much flattery. <laughs> Besides, perhaps I've known about you longer than you think. Oh? Well, how, pray? Unless you heard my family mention me, you cannot have known about me before I came to Bath. I heard about you by report long before that. I'd heard you described by an intimate friend. Oh? I know all about you for years. Looks, character, accomplishments, everything. But how? Who told you? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, you must tell me. Uh, not now. Some other time, perhaps, but oh, not now. That's not fair. No, the fairness is all on your side. You're making it all up. Perfectly true, I assure you. You can assure me as much as you like, but unless you say who told you these things, I shan't believe a word of it. You may believe it or not as you choose. <laughs> Many years ago, I... I had such a description of you that I've wanted to meet you ever since. I hope you're enjoying the concert. Oh, very much. And you? I confess I'm a little disappointed. Oh, why? I just hoped the singing would be better. Don't you like the tenor, then? Not very much. To tell you the truth, I shall not be sorry when it's all over. Oh, that's too harsh. There's always some pleasure to be got from music. The orchestra is not bad, surely. No. I suppose not. You're very good at finding reasons for enjoying things. Oh, I have so few opportunities of listening to good music. I'm not at all a good judge. Oh, you mustn't say that. It's true, I'm afraid. But however bad the performance, I always try to imagine how good it ought to be. I don't really listen properly at all. <laughs> You're even cleverer than I thought. That means you listen twice at the same time. All I was trying to say was that even though you're probably quite right about the singer, I'm still enjoying the concert. Oh, you shame me. I must try to be imaginative like you. Then perhaps I shall enjoy everything. I beg your pardon, Miss Elliot. We must apply to you again to know what this next song is about. Mr. Elliot says you're so good at Italian. <laughs> Let me see. It's another love song. Ah, it's more pain and grief, I suppose. <laughs> I'm afraid so, yes. Sweet hope now returns to my soul and calm to my sad heart. You, dear damsel, who have put so much trust in, well, in, in me, I suppose, you will find one man faithful in love. Oh, it's a happy one, then. Yes, it seems to be. My heart is content with its dear object, which will shine forever in my breast. How charming. Is that all? Yes. Oh, quite enough. 
who could ask for more than content in the dear object of his heart. Thank you, my dear cousin. Yes, thank you. I must wish you good night, Monsieur. Aren't you staying for the rest of the concert? No, I, I must be going. I must get home as soon as possible. But surely this next song is worth staying for? No. There is nothing worth staying for here. For me. Miss Elliot. Oh, good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Rook. Well, Miss Elliot, we weren't expecting you. But I said yesterday that I was coming this morning, Mrs. Rook. I know you did. I know you did. Look, Ma, Miss Elliot has come after all. Good morning. I don't understand what Mrs. Rook means. I said yesterday that I was coming, so of course I have come. And I'm very grateful. We really weren't expecting you. But why not? Oh, we know all about the concert last night, Miss Elliot. Oh, I was afraid you would. There can't be very much left for me to tell you. Oh, I think there is. Well, I enjoyed myself very much. Although some people were dissatisfied with the singing. But not with other things? Not at all. The orchestra really played quite well, I thought. Oh, the orchestra, we don't want to hear about that. We want to know who was there. Oh, well, everybody, I suppose. I saw Miss Atkinson there, I think. And the little Durrans, with their mouths open to catch the music, like unfledged sparrows waiting to be fed. <laughs> <laughs> they never miss a concert. Well, I didn't see them myself, but Mr Elliot said he saw them. Did he now? You saw enough for your own amusement, I dare say. Why, of course she did, ma'am. You didn't have to tell me you had a pleasant evening. I could see it in your eye. Oh, yes. I can see how you spent your time. Between the songs, there was conversation. There was always something agreeable to listen to. You could see all that in my eye. My dear, I can tell that last night you were the person you find the most agreeable in the world. The person who interests you more at the moment than all the rest of the world put together. Oh, this is no place for me, I can see. Uh, excuse me. I really do appreciate your kindness in coming here this morning, Anne. You must have so many much more pleasant demands on your time. But how did you know? Ah. Tell me, is Mr Elliot aware that you know me? I mean, does he know that I'm in Bath? Mr Elliot? Do you know Mr. Elliot? Well, I used to know him quite well, but it's a long time since we last met. But you never told me. If you had, I would have talked to him about you. Well, to tell you the truth, that's exactly what I want you to do. Talk to him about me. He can be very useful to me, you see. And of course, if you ask him anything, it is done. Oh, I am only his cousin, you know. I have no great influence or claim over him. Oh, I beg your pardon. I've been a little premature, I see. I should have waited for official information. But tell me, as an old friend, when may I speak? Next week? No. Not next week, nor the week after. I am not going to marry Mr Elliot. I should really rather like to know why you imagine I am. Well, all men are refused until they offer, of course. But Mr Elliot has never even dreamed of offering. And if he ever does, I certainly shan't accept him, I assure you. No. No. It was not Mr. Elliot whose presence gave me so much. I simply can't understand whatever gave you such an idea. Well, it was Nurse Rook. She got it all from Mrs. Wallace, who seemed a very good authority. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but Mrs. Wallace is quite wrong. Well... Of course. I shall still be very happy to help you in any way I can with Mr. Elliot. You said you'd known him a long time. Yes, yes, I have. Since before he was married? Yes. Well, do tell me what he was like then. Was he anything like he is now? 
Well, I haven't seen him for three years. I'm very sorry. I don't know what to do. I, I don't want to seem officious or mischief-making. You know I would never think that. I think you should know what Mr. Elliot is really like. What? He's a man without heart or conscience. He thinks of no one but himself. He has no feelings for other people, whatever. Forgive me. Mr. Elliot was the intimate friend of my dear husband. He trusted and loved him and thought him as good as himself. Yes? Oh, yes. Mr. Elliot was poor in those days, but he always had a home with us when he wanted it. That must be about the time that he met my father and Elizabeth in London. He did something unworthy then. I don't know what it was, but he, he slighted my father at a time when my father was prepared to be perfectly kind to him. Oh, he wanted to be rich, to marry money, not wait to inherit it. He thought your father wanted him to marry Elizabeth, but that wouldn't give him his freedom. So he married... His wife was a very low woman, they say. Yes, but money, money was all he was after. Her father was a grazier, her grandfather a butcher, and he didn't mind. All he cared about was her fortune. As to the honour of his family, well, he used to say that if baronetcies were for sale, anyone could have his for 50 pounds. Arms, motto, name and livery included. I can give you full proof. You see that inlaid box on the desk there? Would you give it to me? Yes, of course. Thank you. This is the letter Mr. Elliot wrote to my poor husband before we were married. Here it is. You'd better read it yourself. Dear Smith, your kindness almost overpowers me. I wish nature had made such hearts as yours more common. At present, believe me, I have no need of your services being in cash again. Oh, my husband lent him so much. Give me joy. I have got rid of Sir Walter and Miss Elliot. They have gone back to Kellynch and almost made me swear to visit them this summer. This is quite true. We expected him, but he never came. Go on, Anne. But my first visit to Kellynch will be with a surveyor to tell me how I can bring it under the hammer to the best advantage. Oh, it's too much. There's more. The baronet is even worse than last year. I wish I had any name but Elliot. I am sick of it. I thought you should see it. It shows you the man. Yes. Thank you. This proves that everything you've said is true. Except... Why does he want to know us now? Oh, he really does want to marry you, it seems. He's quite sincere about it. How do you know all this? You haven't seen him for three years, you said. No, but Colonel Wallace sees him every day and Mr. Elliot tells him everything. And Colonel Wallace tells Mrs. Wallace. Mrs. Rook. I see. There's another thing, too. Well, what is it? Mrs. Clay, your sister's friend. Mrs. Clay? Well, what has she to do with it? I'm told she has every intention of marrying your father, if she can. Well, yes. I think that is probably true. Your sister may not realise it, but other people do. And Mr. Elliot is older now than he was when he wrote this. He has the greatest respect for titles and connections these days. He has all the money he wants already. Is this true? Oh, yes. He set his heart on being Sir William now. And, of course, if your father marries again, well, Mr. Elliot may have to remain Mr. for the rest of his life. I see. Mrs. Wallace has an amusing idea. 
that it's to be put into your marriage articles with Mr. Elliot that your father is never to marry Mrs. Clay. I don't find that very funny. Well, as Mrs. Rook says, it wouldn't stop him marrying someone else, would it? What a very silly woman Mrs. Wallace must be. Well, I'm very glad you told me all this. I shall know exactly how to behave to Mr. Elliot in future. I thought you should know. <sighs> but you still haven't told me how I could help you. Oh, it's very simple. Once Mr. Elliot was married, he was rich. And he led my husband into expenses far beyond his means. I see. Fortunately, he died before he knew the whole story. He made Mr. Elliot his executor. And what has he done? Nothing. That's the trouble. He's refused to act. Look, here's one of his letters. He refuses to help me at all, you see. That's his notion of gratitude. Then why did you praise him to me? What else could I do? I thought it was all arranged. I couldn't tell you the truth if you were engaged to him. I think you should have done. He didn't love his first wife. I thought he did love you. And if you loved him, well, I thought you might do better. Well, I hope I shall. Ah. And you still haven't told me why I was wrong. Who is he, Anne? Ask Mrs. Rook. for you while I'm out, Elizabeth. Oh, are you going out too? Yes. Well, you might have said so earlier. You could have saved Penelope the trouble of going to Collets for me, but it's too late now. She's gone. Well, I'm really only going to see Lady Russell. Can I give her any message? No. Just my love. And mine. Don't. Kindest regards. Say I'll call on her one day soon, won't you? I didn't know you were planning to call on her, Father. Why not? I should only leave my card. Oh, I see. A morning visit isn't fair in a woman of her age who makes herself up so little. If only she'd wear some rouge, she wouldn't need to be so afraid of being seen. Oh, is she afraid? Oh, yes. Last time I called, the blinds were lowered immediately. Oh, I wonder who that is. Mr. Elliot, I expect. He comes at all hours. Oh, Anne, you know perfectly well Mr. Elliot's gone to Thornbury Park. He won't be back in Bath till our party tomorrow evening. It's just someone else, I dare say, who wants to know us. And who we don't want to know. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Musgrove. Oh, Oh, Mary! Oh, oh, Mary. oh wonderful! Oh, Mary! Mary. Well. No, no, we were not. Mary. How are you, sir? Very well indeed, And you, Elizabeth? Very well. Why didn't you tell us you were coming? There was no point in writing. Besides, we weren't sure we were coming or who was coming with us till the day before yesterday. <laughs> oh, so you're a party, are you? Well, Mrs. Musgrove, Henrietta, Captain Harville and us, if you can call that a party. We're here to buy wedding clothes for Henrietta and Louisa. I see. Where are you staying? At the White Hart. Oh, good. I was afraid... Well, we could hardly put you all up here, I'm afraid, much though we would have liked to, of course. Well, I wish you could, Elizabeth. Our drawing room at the inn isn't nearly so handsome as this. Oh, well, I dare say not. <laughs> this is only half of it, Mary. Do come and see the best. <laughs> oh, dear. Bath. <laughs> I never like it. <laughs> but it's good to see you again, Anne. And you. But did you say that you'd come to buy clothes for Henrietta and Louisa? Oh, yes. Then can Charles Hayter afford to marry? Yes, he has a temporary living. He and Henrietta will be getting married at about the same time as Louisa and James Bennick. Oh, how very nice. And where is the living? Is it anywhere near Uppercross? Not far, about 25 miles. Oh, I am glad this has happened. Henrietta and Louisa have always been such good friends. I really am glad. Well, it's a very fair match for nowadays. And I've liked Charles all my life. You're all very lucky, you know. Your parents have never been interested in anything except your happiness. Mm -hmm. But is Louisa fully recovered again now? Oh, yes. Well, I think so. She's recovered physically, I mean. But, well, she seems to have altered. Oh? 
Well, you remember how she used to run around and jump about and laugh and dance. Well, there's no more of that. If you so much as shut the door a little too hard, she starts and wriggles like a young dab chick in the water. Really? Yes, and Benick sits there reading poetry to her and whispering things into her ear all day long. <laughs> I don't know. Well, you wouldn't like that, I know. <laughs> oh, Benick's a good fellow, really. As a matter of fact, I've got to know him better recently. We had a splendid set to last Monday, rat hunting in my father's great barn. He did very well. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at, Anne? Charles, have you ever seen such china? Mm. Oh, yes. Yes, very fine. <clears throat> very fine indeed. And the mirrors. What's a lot of mirrors. Yes, we're rather pleased with the house ourselves. Oh, I do wish we had a beautiful place like this, Charles. Oh, it's no bigger than Uppercross Cottage, really, is oh, it? Charles. I do hope you can all come to our party tomorrow evening. Yes. Elizabeth, we'd love to. Happy to. I'm so glad. Our cousins, Lady Dalrymple and Miss Carteret, will be here. Oh, how exciting. I do so want to meet them. Isn't that exciting, Charles? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, very, very. Well, sir, we only came to let you know we were here. We really ought to be getting back now, if you'll excuse us. Of course, my boy, of course. Did you say that Mrs. Musgrove will be there too? Yes. Oh, I then expect, may I come with you? I should so like to see her again. Capital. Come along, Mary. We'll see you and Elizabeth later then, sir. Indeed, yes. indeed. Goodbye, Goodbye, Elizabeth. Goodbye, 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 Elizabeth. Goodbye. Goodbye, Charles. Goodbye. Goodbye, Charles. Well, I thought it best to ask them for an evening, Father, rather than to dinner. So few people give dinner parties here. Besides, they'll be meeting our cousin, Lady Dalrymple. Quite. The widow of a Viscount. They'll give them something to talk about when they get home. They'll boast about that at Upper Cross, you may be sure. Exactly. I don't think we need to do anything more for them, do you? No, no, certainly not. No. Yes, Miss Anne. The living came at just the right moment. I'm so happy for you, Henrietta. Oh, I know you are, Anne. You... Well, you've always been so understanding. <laughs> well, now you're going to have to spend your whole time with us. Well, you must tell us where to go and, and what to do and who to see, everything. I'll try. But the last time I bought wedding clothes for anyone, one was when Charles and Mary got married. <laughs> what are you saying about me? <laughs> have you seen our view, Anne? We're just opposite the pump room. Look. Well, so you are. How very convenient. We can see the whole of fashionable Bath without stirring an inch. Here we are. Oh, Captain Wentworth. I'm so glad Charles managed to find you. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Miss Musgrove? Good morning, sir. Good morning, Captain Wentworth. How are you? Very well, thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Miss Elliot. Good morning, sir. Mrs Musgrove, I must know, how is Louisa? Oh, quite recovered now, thank heaven. Thank heavens, indeed. <laughs> Well, I suppose you and Captain Wentworth must have seen a good deal of each other in Bath. Well, a little, yes. Yeah. Come back quickly. Why, what is it? Oh, there's Mrs Clay standing under the colonnade. Mrs Clay? Oh, your sister's friend. Yes. There's a gentleman with her. They just came round the corner from Bath Street. <laughs> it's in very deep in talk. Oh. It is. It's our cousin, Mr. Elliot. Oh. Oh, no, it can't be, Mary. Mr. Elliot left Bath this morning. But it is. Are you telling me I can't recognise the family features? Of course it's Mr. Elliot. Well, I'm sure you could tell us for certain. Eh? Yes, come and see for yourself, then. But quickly, they're parting. There. Oh, yes, you're quite right, Mary. He must have changed his plans. Or else I misunderstood them. I wasn't really listening properly. Mother, I've done something that's going to make you very pleased with me. Oh? I've got a box for the theatre for tomorrow night. Now, aren't I a good boy? Good heavens, Charles, how could you think of such a thing? Hmm? Have you forgotten we said we'd go to my father's tomorrow? Oh, but if there's a well, choice... Women are especially Mrs Musgrove. To meet our cousins, Lady Dalrymple and Miss Cartwright and Mr. Elliot. <laughs> it's all the principal family connections. I don't know what Charles was thinking of. What's an evening party? Nothing ever worth remembering. If your father had really wanted to see us, he should have asked us to dinner. Uh, Mrs. Musgrove, I appeal to you. Yes, well, we better put the play off, Charles. There. You better change the box to Tuesday. We don't want to be divided. 
And if there's a party at her father's tonight, Miss Anne won't be able to come to the play, will she? And I'm sure neither Henrietta nor I would like it if Miss Anne wasn't there. You're very kind, Mum. If I were free to choose for myself, I'd much rather go to the theatre. Oh. I don't really like evening parties. But as Mary seems so anxious to go... Thank you. Well, I'll get you all another box for Tuesday. But I shall still go to the theatre tomorrow night myself. Charles, you will not. Oh, I most certainly shall. No. Mary, I do believe Charles may be teasing you. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charles, you are. Uh, you're so gullible, Mary. Believe anything. I see you still haven't been in Bath long enough to get a taste for its social life, Miss Elliot. Oh, and I hope I never shall. Parties mean nothing to me, usually. I don't play cards, you know. No. No. You never did, I remember now. You used not to like cards. But time makes many changes. It is a long time indeed. Eight and a half years is a long time. Everyone we want is coming. Yes, Miss Ellie. Lady Dalrymple and Miss Carter. Lady Russell, and Mrs. Musgrove, and Henrietta. Oh, you've forgotten, Mr. Elliot. I'm sure Miss Anne hasn't. Oh, no, I counted him already. He's almost part of the family. Oh, I do so like to see him and my father together. He looks at Sir Walter with uh, such respect. Oh, delightful. Mm. Just like a son to his father. <laughs> oh, dear Miss Elliot, may I not say a son to his father? Oh, Penelope, if you will have <laughs> such ideas. Oh, Mrs. Clay. I was so surprised this morning. I thought Mr. Elliot was at Thornbury, but I could have sworn that I saw him with you. Yeah, oh dear, very true. What's this, Penelope? I meant to tell you, Miss Elliot, I met him in Bath Street. I was never more astonished in my life. He turned back and he walked with me to the pump room. Oh. Well, what made him change his plans? Oh, uh, something or other stopped him getting off when he meant to. I forget what. I was in a hurry and not paying much attention. Besides, all he talked about was getting back in time for your party. Oh, did he? Yes, he was most anxious to know how early he could come tomorrow. He was full of tomorrow. <laughs> well, but why didn't you tell me this before, Penelope? I was so full of tomorrow myself that I forgot all about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning, Miss Anne. Good morning, Mrs. Musgrove. Good morning, Mum. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Mary and Henrietta will be back in a moment. Do sit down, my dear. There'll only be a moment. <laughs> I'll write that letter now, Father. Well, ma'am, then Mr. Musgrove and my brother Hater met again to talk it all over, you see, and the young people would not be denied. Well, I can understand that. After all, Mr. Hater isn't so very young, is he? Oh, they were quite wild about it, you know, and we thought it would be better than a long engagement. That's just what I was going to say. It's good for young people to have to struggle a little together on a small income. Much better than a long engagement. Oh, my dear Mrs. Croft, there is nothing I abominate more than a long engagement. Look at this, Miss Elliot. What is it? A uh, uh, portrait. Do you know who that is? It's Captain Bennett. Right, so you can guess who it's for. Louisa? Naturally. But it wasn't done for her. Oh? No, no. Bennett met some clever young German at the Cape. Sat to him for my poor sister. Oh, she wanted a picture of him, you see. Oh, yes, of course. Do you know what he wants me to do now? Get it set properly for Louisa. I'm really rather shocked that he should be so insensitive. Yes, well, I'm not sorry to hand the task over to someone else, I can tell you. Wentworth's writing about it now. Oh, I see. Poor Fanny. She wouldn't have forgotten him so soon. No, I can well believe that. No, it wasn't in her nature. She doted on him, you know. It wouldn't be in the nature of any woman who truly loved. Do you claim so much for your sex? Well, certainly. We don't forget men as soon as you forget us. Hmm. We can't help ourselves. We live at home, quiet and confined. We have... So much time to let our feelings prey on us. Do you imagine men's feelings don't prey on them? Ah, oh, but men are always doing things. You have your professions and occupations. There's always some business or other to take you back again into the world at once. No, your feelings aren't as strong as ours. Well, I believe the opposite. Now, I believe there's a real correspondence between our, our minds and our bodies. Just as men have stronger bodies than women, so they have stronger feelings, too. Ah, then, if our bodies are weaker, you must grant that our feelings are tenderer. They're more susceptible. <laughs> Perhaps. No, there's no question about it. You don't know what it is to feel like a woman. And it would be too much for you if you did. Too much? Oh, yes. 
Men have so many physical difficulties to struggle with in their lives. If they have to struggle, as we do, with feelings as well, it will be too much altogether. Well, we shall never agree, I'm... A... Oh, have you finished that letter, Wentworth? Uh, not quite. Uh, just a few lines more. I, I shall be done in five minutes. Well, there's no hurry on my side. I've been very good anchorage here. We shall never agree, I'm afraid. Perhaps no man or woman ever could. Uh, let me at least try to persuade you. you know, all history is against you, you know. And all literature, prose and verse. No, no proof <laughs> from literature. Men have always had every advantage in giving their side of the story. Oh, now, why do you say that? Because it's true. Men have always had a much better education than women. Mm. Their hand has held the pen, not ours. No, I won't allow you any proof from books. Well, then where shall we find proof? Nowhere. I do believe you're trying to get out of it. Oh, no. Women lead quiet lives. Their knowledge is drawn from their observation of their own little circle. If I were to give you my proof, I would be betraying confidences. Ah, yes, I see. Well, if you put it like that, of course. We must simply agree to differ. Well, very well, but... If I only could make you understand how a, a man suffers... when he takes his last look at his wife and children, when he watches the boat that he sent them away in for as long as he can still see it, and then when he turns away and says, God knows whether we shall ever meet again. Oh, I think I do understand. The only privilege I claim for my own sex, oh, and it's not a very enviable one, you needn't covet it, is that of loving longest when life or hope are gone. You're a good soul. I shan't quarrel with you. And when I think of Benwick, well, my tongue is tied. Well, Frederick, you and I part company here, I think. What? What? Well, I'm going home, and you have an engagement with your friend. Oh, yes. Yes, we separate here. We shall all meet again at your party, Miss Elliot. We had your sister's card yesterday. I'm so glad you are coming. And Frederick's coming too, I think, aren't you, Frederick? Yes, very true. What, are you going? Haven't you heard a word I've said? Uh, well, Harville and I will soon be after you. That is, if you're ready, Harville. Yes, I'll only be half a minute. I know you want to be off. I shall only be half a minute. Goodbye, Mrs. Musgrave. Goodbye. Well, Miss Elliot, I shall try to persuade you some more this evening. Oh, I think I was only saying that perhaps Captain Bennett does not have a mind to affliction. Ah, perhaps so. Perhaps so. Let's go, Alvin. Well, very well. Well, goodbye, Miss Elliot. Mrs. Musgrove? Sir? And God bless you. I beg your pardon, ma'am. I forgot my gloves. By all means. By all means. I don't know where Mary and Henrietta can be, my dear. Oh, it's all right, Mama. I I'll just wait here by the... That's right. Amuse yourself, my dear. I can listen in silence no longer. I must speak to you as I can. You pierce my soul. I'm half agony, half hope. Don't tell me I'm too late, that such precious feelings have gone forever. Too late. I offer myself to you again with a heart which is even more your own than when you almost broke it eight and a half years ago. Never say that men forget sooner than women, that their love is the first to die. I have never loved anyone but you. I may have been unjust, I may have been weak and resentful, but never inconstant. I only came to Bath because of you. I think and plan only for you. Have you not seen this? Can you fail to understand what I want? I would not have waited even these last ten days to speak if I only could have guessed your feelings as I'm sure you have guessed mine. I will only be a moment, my dear. I must just go and post this. Well, well, bless me. Oh, I can hardly write. Every moment you say something which overwhelms me. Your voice sinks, but I can hear every syllable when others cannot. Oh, you are too.
too good, too excellent. You do us justice indeed. You do believe there is true love and true constancy among men. Believe them to be most fervent, most undeviating in Frederick Wentworth. I must go, uncertain of my fate, but I shall come back here or follow you as soon as possible. A word, a look will be enough to decide whether I enter your father's house this evening. Or never. Oh, Frederick. Frederick, Frederick. Oh. That's all women ever think about. Oh, Charles, be quiet. Oh, and the new fashion's beautiful, Anne. I'm going to wear nothing but long sleeves for the evening from now on. Long sleeves? Yes, and short petticoats. Coloured and, and with braces. Oh, I had no idea of the fashions living at Upper Cross. And a good thing, too, I should say. I pity my poor cousin if he's going to have to keep you in coloured petticoats all his life. <laughs> with braces? Do you like the new short waist, Anne? I'm not sure that I do, really. Uh, the what? Aren't you feeling well? I... Uh, um, no, yes. Henry, at all. You look rather ill, Anne. Oh, my poor Miss Anne. Uh, oh, it's nothing, Mum. It'll soon pass. Mm -hmm. Would you like to lie down here for no, a minute? I think I'd better go home. Oh, by all means, my dear. Go home at once and take care of yourself. Or you won't be well enough for the party tonight. Oh, yes, you must be all right for that. Charles, ring and order a chair. Miss Anne must not walk. Oh, no, Mum, I'd rather walk. It's what I need. But you may catch cold. No, uh, my head, I want to clear it. Fresh air is what I want. You haven't fallen down recently. You haven't slipped and bumped your head? No, 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 nothing like that. Oh, good. Then I expect you'll be all right again by this evening. Yes, thank you, Mrs Musgrove. We're all looking forward to it so much. <laughs> Charles! I'm... I'm afraid, Mum, I... I hope it is perfectly understood that... That what, my dear? I, you will tell the other gentlemen that we are expecting them this evening, too. I'm so afraid there might have been some mistake. Oh, I don't think so. We are expecting Captain Wentworth as well as Captain Harville. Oh, Captain Harville has every intention of coming, I assure you. Oh, do you think so? I'm afraid I, I should be so sorry if... You will mention it to him when you see them again, won't you? You will see them again, I'm sure. Do please promise me. Oh, to be sure, my dear. Charles, if you see Captain Harville anywhere, remember to give him Miss Anne's message. Of course, Mama. There's no need to be uneasy, my dear. Captain Harville considers himself quite engaged. I'll answer for it. But Captain Wentworth? Oh, and Captain Wentworth, too, I dare say. Yes, yes, Anne. They'll both be there. Now, let me take you home. Oh, no, no, thank you, Charles. I shall be quite all right by myself. Don't be so foolish. Of course I shall take you. No, I don't like Bath. There's too much smoke and confusion. Give me the country every time. Oh, hello, Wentworth. May I join you? Please. Of course, of course. Which way are you going? Just to Gay Street? Or are you going on further up the town? I... I hardly know. Are you going as high as Belmont? Anywhere near Camden Place? Yes, I could be. Because if you are, I shall have no scruple in asking you to take my place and give Anne your arm to her father's. It will be a pleasure. She's rather done for this morning, I'm afraid. She can't get home on her own. I shall be delighted. And I really ought to be at that fellow's in the marketplace. Which fellow's is that? The gunsmith fellow's. You know. He promised to show me a capital gun he's just sending off to somebody. He said he wouldn't pack it up until the last possible moment so I could have a look at it. And if I don't go now, I shall miss it. Oh, then, Charles, you must go. Oh, thank you for bringing me so far. Yes, you must hurry. Yes. It's a splendid piece, he says. I'm sure it is. It sounds rather like that second size double barrel of mine you shot with round Winthrop one day. Do you remember? Oh, yes, an excellent gun. Charles, you must hurry or you'll miss it. Yes. Oh, yes. 
Well, I'll leave Anne to you then, Wentworth. I shall look after her to the very best of my ability, Musgrove. Yes. Good. Well, I hope you'll soon be feeling well again, Anne. Yes, I must say you're looking a good deal better already. And feeling it. Goodbye, Charles, and thank you. Goodbye, then. Well, Miss Elliot? Well, sir? Where shall we go? Anywhere you like, so long as it's not to my father's. Eight and a half years. It's enough to have changed every pore of one's skin and every feeling in one's heart. And yet our feelings haven't changed. No. Mine never altered ever. Except to grow deeper. Oh, I never dared to imagine it. And what I did imagine was so terrible. And I never imagined you imagining such a thing. Not till the concert. Oh, that concert. I didn't hear a note. <laughs> You should have known me better than to be jealous of Mr. Elliot. But everyone was saying that everyone you... Everyone was wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> I've never loved anyone but you, Anne. Nor I anyone but you. I tried to forget you. I even thought I succeeded. I thought I was indifferent, but I was really only angry. Well, perhaps you were right. I was still angry when we met again at Uppercross. Oh, and I was still bitterly regretful. And then, at Lyme, I suddenly realized... I thought you were in love with Louisa. Oh, I tried to be. I knew it was impossible, but I did try. And then at Lyme, I realized I'd never stopped loving you. I didn't know what to do. Everyone thought, like you, that I was virtually engaged to Louisa, and then... And then the accident, and then... Oh, God. I had to get away, so I went to my brother's. It was through him we first met. Yes. Do you know what he asked me? Had you altered much, he wanted to know. And what did you say? To my eye, you could never alter Anne. Is that what you told him? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Oh, that concert. With your cousin sitting on one side of you and Lady Russell on the other. Lady Russell. She's a very good woman, Frederick. Oh, is she? She persuaded you once, don't forget. I thought she was trying to persuade you again to marry Mr. Elliot. I thought everything was against me. I'm not a girl now, you know. You are to me. I was wrong to yield to her then, but I thought I was doing my duty. A very strange sort of duty. She could never have persuaded me to do the opposite, to marry a man I didn't like. Well, I suppose I should have known better, but you can imagine my fears. You yielded to her once, after all, and there she was, still sitting next to you. How was I to know she couldn't persuade you again? Frederick, no one will ever persuade me to do anything again. Except you.
Your cousin and Captain Wentworth seem very deep in talk, Elliot. Cousin? Which cousin? Anne. Look at them. Anyone would think they were engaged. Captain Wentworth? Yes. But I thought I you were... told you I wasn't in the least attracted by Mr. Elliot. You should have believed me. Dear, I don't know what to say. There's nothing to say now. My dear, my dearest Anne, I only did what I thought was right. I know. Now I hope that I can persuade you. And not that you were wrong then, but that I am right now. Well, it'll take some getting used to, but all I've ever wanted is for your happiness, you know. Then you won't find it hard to love Frederick, too. You must begin tonight at our party. I shall make you. Come on. But my things. What you need I... with them? I'll buy you new ones, better ones. Come on. London. I congratulate you, Anne. Oh, thank you, Ma. You have deceived us all. Our thoughts lay in quite another direction. Yes, Anne. Where's Mr. Elliot tonight? I don't know. And I don't care. Very good, Charles, enjoy yourself. I can't understand it, Father. She seems to have disappeared. What, Penelope? Oh, it's not like her. Perhaps she's not feeling well. She's not in her room. Oh, odd. Very odd. Oh, good evening, Lady Russell. Well, Walter, were you as surprised as I was? Surprised? Oh, by Anne, you mean? No, 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 not surprised. Well, are you pleased? Oh, it's not a bad match for Anne, even though he is a sailor. Not at all ill-looking. No. I've seen him by daylight. I've eyed him well. He'll do for Anne. Good evening, sir. <laughs> Who's that? Well, well, you gave us no warning of this, did you, Wentworth? Well, surprise is always the best form of attack, Harville. Well, well, it's about time you were married. You're not as young as all that. Thank you. <laughs> Captain Wentworth, I must ask you to accept my very best wishes. You're very kind, ma'am. I think you know I've always loved Anne like my own daughter. Yes, ma'am. I have had reason to know it. I hope you will believe me when I say that it was always her happiness that I was thinking of, and of which I'm still thinking now. Yes, ma'am. And thank you. Well, ma'am, are you as pleased as I am? Well, I don't know quite how pleased that is, but I'm very pleased for myself. And so am I. I've always liked Anne. She's so sensible. And she's much the most interesting of those three sisters, don't you agree? Oh, yes. And the one with the sweetest nature. It's so obvious that she'll make a good wife. I can't understand why no one's ever asked her to marry them before. Well, and about time, too. That's what I say. I thought we were never going to get Frederick married when Bennick went off with... Uh, What's that girl's name? My sister, Louisa. That's right, Louisa. <laughs> well, thank heavens he's off our hands at last. Oh. Couldn't you be a little more? Well, No, Mary, he's perfectly right. Everybody should get married as soon as possible. All this hanging about never does anybody any good at all. <laughs> exactly. Well, Mary. I'm delighted to have been of some service to you, Admiral. Well, so you have, my dear. But we shall expect to see a good deal of you both at Kellynch, of course. Indeed we shall. I don't believe it. It's not possible. Well, Mr. Elliot's my heir. But it's here, in black and white, sir. Well, let me see. I I'd rather not show it to you, sir. It's not entirely respectful. But I felt you should know. Oh, yes, yes, thank you, sir. Is something the matter, Father? Yes, my dear. Thank you, Wallace, thank you. It, it isn't about Penelope, is it? I'm afraid so. She's run off with your cousin. My heir, Mr. Elliot. I thought he was Irish when I first saw him. Ooh. I'm delighted. Well, Captain Wentworth is much richer than either Captain Bennock or Charles Hater. 
He's a capital shot, you know. Is he? Hmm? Is he? She's a girl after my own heart. Oh, isn't it wonderful? We're all getting married now. <laughs> <laughs> but, Father, what are we going to do about it? Nothing. We must behave as though nothing has happened or will happen. Yes, you're quite right, of course. We are very ill-used, Elizabeth. Very ill-used indeed. But we mustn't show it. No. Well, shall I get them all to sit down to cards now? Yes, yes, excellent <laughs> idea. Shall we all sit down now? No cards? You're sure you haven't changed? Quite sure. Frederick? I've been thinking about the past. For all we've suffered, I was right, I think. I mean, I was only obeying my conscience. I can't reproach myself with that, can I? It's not a bad thing in a woman to have a strong sense of duty. Ah, but duty to whom? <laughs> oh, I hope you're going to try and forgive Lady Russell. Not yet. But perhaps in time. Oh, please, Frederick. Oh, yes, I'll try. I may even succeed. I've been thinking to Anne. I've been wondering if someone may not have been an even worse enemy to me than Lady Russell. I mean myself. Tell me, if I'd written to you 18 months after you... after our engagement was broken, would you have answered me? Would I? Oh, why didn't you write? <sighs> because I was too proud to ask you again. I didn't understand you or do you justice. Oh, Frederick. You and I are going to have to make an agreement. To do what? Never to reproach ourselves or each other with what might have been. Or we shall make a sad pair. Yes. Yes, agreed. I shall just have to learn to put up with being far happier than I deserve. 